The second question is from Mark King. Is masturbation haram for teens? A similar question has been asked. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Zakir Naik. My name is Abdul Ghaniyu. I would like to know the ruling on masturbation. I traveled and left my family behind for greener pasture for about one and a half years now. I miss my wife very much. When I call her online for video chat, we sometimes end up with masturbation. I would like to know if this is sinful or not. A similar question is asked by third questioner. Assalamu alaikum sir. I am Habibullah Islam from Assam, India. I am a student. Is masturbation haram in Islam? I do this and later I regret. I do Toba, but after some days I do it again. I can't find the solution to this problem. I am unhappy with masturbation and what I do. The question that is masturbation permitted in Islam is a very common question. And literally every session I have one or two people asking this question. But I've been trying to avoid answering this question. But today I decided that let me answer this question. As far as the act of masturbation is concerned, the scholars in Islam, there are different opinions. But the majority of the scholars, they say that masturbation in Islam is haram. Even though majority of the scholars say haram, there's a large number which also say that it is makhru. And there's another large number of scholars who say that it is muba, it's optional. So I would like to say at the outset that majority of the scholars in terms of percentage, majority, they say that it is haram. But a large number, there may not be majority, but the number is huge. A large number of scholars, they also say it is makru, it is discouraged. And another large number, though not in majority, they also say that it is muba. And we'll discuss this issue today. And I'll let you know that which group of scholars do I agree with towards the end. As far as the jurist, the fuqaha, amongst the Shafi and the Maliki, almost all of them, they say that masturbation is haram. And according to Imam Ashafi, may Allah have mercy on him, he says it is haram and he quotes the verse of the Quran from Surah al muminun chapter number 23, verse number 5, 6 and 7. If you read Surah Mu'minun chapter number 23, verse number 1 onward, it says that believers will eventually be successful. Verse number 2 says, those who humble themselves in prayers. Verse number 3 says, those who avoid vain talks. Verse number 4 says that those who do acts and deeds of charity. Verse number 5 says, those who guard their private parts or those who abstain from sex. Verse number 6 says, except those who they have married, that is their spouses, that is their wives, and those which their right hand possesses. For them, there is an exception. And verse number 7 says, that all those who cross these limits, they are transgressors. So here the Quran says in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 5, 6 and 7, that the moments are those who guard their private parts, abstain from illicit sex, except from their spouses and what their right hand possesses. That's an exception. And all those who cross these limits, they are transgressors. So based on this verse of the Quran, Imam Shafi, may Allah be pleased with him, he says that here the verse is very clear cut, that sex you can only have with your spouse and what your right hand possesses and everything else is prohibited. Now, this verse of the glorious Quran can be interpreted in two ways. The first group of scholars, they understand this verse as here guarding your private parts. In Arabic, it means that all types of sexual pleasure. That means all types of sexual pleasures for a moment 
is only permitted with your wife and what your right hand possesses, that is the slave girl. And now the slave woman has been abolished. So now it is restricted to only your wives. So based on this verse, if all sexual pleasure is only permitted with your wife, then even masturbation is haram. Masturbation is stimulation of your organ and most of the time it is self-stimulation of your private part such that there is ejaculation or there is orgasm. But the other group of scholars say that this verse, guard your private parts, it's only restricted to sexual intercourse. So the verse of the Quran actually means that you can have sexual intercourse only with your wife and what your right hand possesses. Other than sexual intercourse, this verse doesn't refer to other things. So if you agree with the second group of scholars, then masturbation doesn't fall under this verse of the Quran. That's the reason the scholars are divided. But if you literally know the verse of the Quran, the meaning, it says, guard your private parts. So, but naturally, there is no explicit verse in the Quran which says that masturbation is prohibited. And what we realize from this verse, it means sexual intercourse. And there are various other verses which have prohibited sexual intercourse with people outside the marital bonds or if they are not what your right hand possesses, if they are not your slave woman. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 32, come not close to adultery, zina, or fornication, for it is an evil opening other roads to evil. So based on this verse of the Quran, the other group of scholars, they say that this verse specifically refers to sexual intercourse. That means sexual intercourse is only permitted with your wife and with what your right hand possesses. Otherwise, it doesn't mean other things. So if you agree the meaning of this verse is only restricted to sexual intercourse, then masturbation is not included in this verse. So that's the reason scholars differ. And according to Ibn Hazm, he says that our beloved Prophet has permitted a person to touch his private part. And the hadith, it says touch with your left hand, no problem. It is your organ you can touch. He also says that it is your fluid, you can emit it if you want. So based on that, he says when the Prophet has permitted to touch your private organ, and that is what you do in masturbation, it is self-stimulation. So surely it is permitted. And masturbation is of two types. One is the self-stimulation. The other type of masturbation is your spouse or your sexual partner is stimulating you. And no scholar ever says that your wife or your spouse is not permitted to touch your private part. So based on this, surely the other type of masturbation where your spouse touches is permitted. So when you can enjoy with your spouse touching your private part, then why can't you do it yourself? So based on this, the second group of scholars, which is lesser in number, they say that this verse does not include masturbation at all. It is just talking about sexual intercourse. So sexual intercourse is only permitted with your wife, with your spouse, and with what your right hand possesses. It doesn't include masturbation. So that's how the scholars differ. There is another argument given by the first group of scholars who say that masturbation is prohibited. And they quote the hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad which is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 7, hadith number 5066, in which our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that, O young people, whoever has the means to get married, they should get married. For it will help you to lower your gaze and guard your modesty, guard your private parts. And it continues, those who cannot marry, they should fast, for it will reduce your sexual desire. So here, the first group of scholars, they say, see here the Prophet said, if you cannot marry, you should fast. The Prophet did not say masturbation. That is the reason masturbation is haram. Now this logic, to say that just because the Prophet did not say masturbate, doesn't make masturbation haram. Yes, what we have to understand from this hadith, that the young people should marry if they can, if they cannot marry, they should fast. That means fasting is mustahab. Nowhere does it mean that masturbation is haram because it's not mentioned as haram. Suppose if I say that eat date, it's good for nourishment and for energy. And if the Prophet says eat date, that does not mean eating mango is haram. It means eating date is good, it's mustahab. The other fruits become muba. 
So it is wrong to conclude from this hadith of Sai Bukhari that masturbation is haram. It is wrong logic. Because for haram, there should be strong evidence from the Quran or from Sai Hadith. So based on this, the second group of scholars who say it is not haram, they say there is no text at all anywhere in the Quran. This is the only verse which the scholars quote of Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 5 to 7, which they say it doesn't include masturbation. There is no clear-cut evidence. It only speaks about sexual intercourse. And there is no Sai Hadith prohibiting masturbation. There are some daif and maudu hadith we say masturbation is prohibited but that is not good enough for evidence. So we come to the second group of scholars and we will discuss what they say. They believe that masturbation is makhru. Amongst them is Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, who was the companion of the Prophet. There is a person who comes to him and says that I have been masturbating. He says that masturbation is better than fornication. Marriage is better than masturbation. That means the call, the verdict of Ibn Abbas, may Allah be peace with him, who was a close companion of the Prophet Muhammad According to him, marriage is better than masturbation, masturbation is better than fornication. Indirectly, it means that surely masturbation is permitted, but it is makru. The best is marriage. If you cannot marry, then masturbate because it will prevent you from fornication. So based on this, the second group of scholars who say masturbation is permitted but comes in the makhru category is Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. He is of the opinion that masturbation should not be done but if you are going to do fornication then you can do masturbation and he puts it in the makhru category. So the humbly school of thought, most of them, they say that masturbation comes under the makhru category. That means it's discouraged. And this is also said by Mujahid. He says that masturbation, it should be avoided. But if it's done to prevent fornication or zina, it is permitted. This is the view even of Ibn Hazm. That Ibn Hazm says that masturbation is makru, it's discouraged. But if you're going to involve in fornication, then better do masturbation. It is permitted in such cases. And he says that though masturbation is permitted, it is not amongst the deeds of the noble people. It's not the deeds of nobility. That's for his saying, Ibn Hazm. That means the noble people normally don't do it, so it is discouraged. So that is the reason this group of scholars put it in the Makru category. There are many other scholars in this category. Time will not permit to discuss that. The third group of scholars, they put in the Muba category. The students of Ibn Abbas, some of the students they understood that Ibn Abbas has put masturbation in the makru category and even they say it is makru. But the other group of students of Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, they said that it is mubah, permitted, without any condition. Amongst them, we have Jafar bin Zaid. He was a tabayin, may Allah have mercy on him, and he was a student of Ibn Abbas. May Allah be pleased with him. And his opinion is that masturbation is permitted. There is no harm at all in doing. It is mubah. There is no sin. Under normal circumstances permitted. There is another tabain by the name of Amr bin Dinar. According to him also, masturbation is permitted. There is no restriction. It comes under the mubah category. If you want to do it, do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. It is in the mubah category. Even the famous scholar Imam Ashokani, he's very famous, just 150, 200 years back he was there. And according to him also masturbation is mubah. It is permitted. It is optional. If you want to do it, do it. There is no sin. If you don't do it also, there is no problem. It is under the mubah category. And even according to Bardawi, he says that masturbation is makru. But depending upon the situation, if it causes you trouble, it comes under the haram category. And he also goes on to say that if you fear you will do fornication, masturbation becomes further. That's his opinion. So here you have three groups of scholars. One group which is the majority saying it is haram, based on the verse of Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 5 to 7. Whereas the second group of scholars say it is makru, it's discouraged. And the third group say it is mubah, 
it is permissible it depends upon you according to me i being a medical doctor that in our medical college when i did my medicine they used to say that when you ask a person do you masturbate 99% will say yes and the remaining 1% they are lying anyway this is just a joke it's amongst the medical students it's not a fact but according to research today research tells us that amongst the males 95% masturbate amongst the females approximately 80% masturbate i'm not saying that it is normal to masturbate but it is very common and there is a myth that which is there if you go to some of the islamic sites and those who believe it is haram they say that masturbation causes blindness masturbation it causes nervous problem all these things are a myth in no way does masturbation cause blindness in no way does it cause a nervous problem yes if you do excessive masturbation there can be certain problem that is excessive masturbation and even medical science tells us if you do excessive sexual intercourse with your wife maybe 10 times a day even that will cause problem so excessive anything or excessive most of the thing will cause you problem but normal masturbation medically doesn't cause any problem if you do masturbation according to medical science it is normal if you don't do also it is normal but the majority of the people are involved in masturbation but i'm not saying it is the norm but i'm saying that majority people do it so based on what the scholars say and what medical science says i agree more with the second group of scholars and i would say that masturbation is makru it is discouraged to make anything haram you require a strong evidence from the quran or from sahih hadith and there is no evidence whatsoever the verse of the quran i do agree with the second group of scholars for example ahmed ibn hanbal may be pleased with him and the other group of scholars ibn abbas may be pleased with him i believe with ibn abbas call that it is not haram and this verse of surah mu'minun chapter number 23 verse number 5 to 7 does not include masturbation it's not prohibited it is restricted to sexual intercourse and i put it because there's no evidence it will either come in the mubah i put in the makru because i agree with the call of ibn hazm that it is not the act of nobility but because majority of them being involved in it and there is no evidence from the quran and the sunna to prohibit it i put in the makru category everything the majority do is not correct for example today according to research 95% of the women in the western countries before they pass the university they involved in zina that does not make zina halal not at all the quran is very clear cut in surah isra chapter 17 verse number 32 that zina is prohibited it is haram majority do doesn't give it a sanction to make it halal but if there is no text in the quran or sahih hadith prohibiting it it becomes muba i put it into the makru category for various reasons what are the reasons it's not the act of the noble people number 2 that excessive masturbation is haram it can cause problems it can cause health problems it can cause psychological problems and most of the time masturbation is associated with haram activities most of the time masturbation is associated with pornography whether you are watching a blue film or a pornographic film or you are watching obscene photographs images here itself if it associated with haram activity that again becomes haram so if you associate masturbation with pornography or with obscene photographs it is haram and that is prohibited and it leads to that high chances that's the reason i would say that best is to avoid but if you cannot marry for various reasons that we have so the best would be you fast as was recommended by beloved prophet in sahih bukhari volume number 7 hadith number 5066 that oh young people whoever has the means to get married they should get married for it will help you to lower your gaze and guard your modesty and if you cannot marry then you fast it will reduce sexual urge and this is scientifically proven that if you fast it reduces your urge of your sexual desires so the best is to fast but it will not be possible to fast always and depending upon the levels of sexual urge that keeps on differing so based on this the mustab is to fast but 
if you cannot or if that's not sufficient to suppress your desire and if you have to masturbate it is permitted it is not a sin there is no evidence anywhere in the quran or say hadith which says that if you masturbate you'll get a punishment here the reason i'm saying this that i being a medical doctor i know that there are many muslims many of them hundreds who have come to me for consultation and they believe because of the views of most of the Muslims, they are good practicing Muslims, but they believe it is haram. So they come to me and the similar what question was asked that he stands, he is unhappy and he has got mental stress because they are good practicing Muslims, they pray five times salah, but they realize and they think masturbation is haram. So they get tensed up and worked up. And this causes many a time big problem because they think it is haram and they're doing it and they have the guilty feeling this guilty conscious prevents them sometimes or many a time even to do good deeds it disturbs them in the salah it disturbs them in the reading of the Quran so because of not knowing the fact what is there in the medical science today these people think it's haram it disturbs them so I would like to tell you that I'm not giving a blanket rule that do it. I'm just telling you best avoid it. But if you have sexual urges which you cannot suppress, doing masturbation is not haram according to me. It is permissible. Don't do it excessively. Once in a while, no problem. Don't be mentally disturbed that it's haram. And as the questioner asked, I have asked for forgiveness. Again, I do it. I repent. Again, I do it. So let me tell you that if you come under this category where you have sexual desire that keeps on differing from different people. Some people have high sexual desire, some people are medium, some people have less. So if you fall in the category of people who have high sexual desires and if you're not married and if you have to masturbate, though it is makru, I would say it's discouraged, but don't have the guilt feeling. Don't do it excessively. Don't do it along with pornography. And I would go to the extent that if because of this, you're going to do fornication or zina, or adultery then according to me masturbation becomes mustahab and as mentioned by Imam Ibn Hanbal and Ibn Abbas may Allah be pleased with him that masturbation is better than fornication so normally according to me I would like to repeat I'm not giving a blanket permission all of you should do according to me masturbation comes in the makru category best is to avoid it if you have the urges and if you're not married better that you fast if the urges are yet there then masturbation is permitted there is no sin there is no punishment you don't have to feel guilty and if you have the urge and if you think you do fornication then better do masturbation and avoid fornication and marry as soon as possible we know that masturbation differs in different people even after marriage masturbation majority of the people masturbate 70% of the males after marriage they masturbate but of course by age it keeps on reducing marriage also reduces the more sexual intercourse you have it reduces so this is my view regarding masturbation it is makru avoiding is the best next option is fasting if you yet have the urges then it's permissible don't have the guilt feeling and see to it that you practice and stay on the Quran and Sunnah offer your Salah and do your Ibadah and inshallah pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he keeps you on the straight path. Hope that's the question.